Okay, so we've already talked about the pylons, and they were there to stop the events of Beyond happening again. Um, well, I for one love how they intersect in the recess shuttle bay. It's very sleek and very minimalist, and I'd love to see that thing open and just be functional. But how did you approach the redesign of that whole area? A bit more in detail. I know Vague talked about it, but I'm trying to follow the script here. <laughs> and why shrink down the actual shuttle bay doors so much from the Ryan Church design? Does that mean that she doesn't have this humongous shuttle bay um, from which dozens of shuttles can launch from, which is very sort of not TOS y? Uh, what do you think? I just didn't, I, I didn't shrink it down that much. It's just, it's just not, it's just, it was just too big and it didn't go with the lines of what I was doing, you know? And, um, um, it ended up actually, it started looking like a big reverse mouth. And, um, so I needed to make that mouth smaller. And, um, mm. so, um, it went through a few iterations, but you know, it's, an, it's, a, that whole tail end there is an intersection point of many lines. It's got the lines from the t uh, trailing edge of the, pylons it's got the lines from the top of the trailing edge of the neck and there's a lot of compound and convex curves going on there um it's very complicated that's how it was so that's how i solved those lines how i brought those back into there it just ended up looking that way and, and um the the top part of the pylons are curved almost mm. like a aircraft wing and then as it comes down to the um, to the shuttle bay, they become more of a flat, therefore having a flat plane for the shuttle rim uh, of, of the bay. You know, it was, it, I don't know if you're looking at the picture, but yeah, it was a really complicated thing to pull off. It's modeling-wise, it took uh, it took a long time um, to, to figure that stuff out. Well, I mean, how much have we actually seen the bay be, being used? Seriously, have we seen it being used that much? Yeah, three times, maybe. Yeah, I mean. Um, I, I just took artistic license there, you know. If if they have a if they have a show and they they they, if you actually check that and you can, you can enlarge it a little bit and, and make it uh, more acceptable um, to larger vessels, I guess, or more stuff coming in and out. But I really, you know, my whole thing was, well, you know, what we don't really actually see the shuttle bay that much. It's been the, the size of it's been determined from before. But why can I, Why does it have to be bigger or the same? Why can't I make it a little smaller? Um, but, you know, the ship is gigantic. All right, so one detail which we both like was the new stepping texture on the bridge module. Uh, as we can see in the final film, that this is more of a removable piece, which is really cool because it kind of ties in with bridge modules that we know are removable plug-and-play. They always have been for the ships. But, but talk us through this design choice uh, to move away from the previous gentle curves up into these steps. Well, again, it was... It was relationship of form. There were steps on the graphics on the side of the rim of the saucer. Um, there's steps that go into the, the nacelles, um, the, the rear of the domes of the nacelles, mm -hmm. and and therefore those steps. I added steps to the top of the um, of the saucer. They just worked good for how I was designing the. Uh, um, the impulse engines and the the previous enterprise um it kind of had these shapes and it was it was it was fine it just didn't have much of a oomph like statement and um i just wanted to have some kind of repetition you know we have a thing in design called repetition equals strength so you you, you add repetition to things and it strengthens something up it's a visual thing and it just it just made it uh, and it's it sat well um on the top there so it worked out Cool. You know that that my edges again. I I wasn't able to finesse those edges um, before handing off the model, um, but they finessed them in the uh, in the final cut of the film. The final model, um, my edges are 90 degrees, which they would never be, um, and so they they added nice nice curves to the edges there, and uh, it looks quite nice. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me in your redesign is the engine placement. Uh, we can see a side by side of the original 2009 Enterprise now how its engines are underneath the line of the saucer and squashed in closer to the hull. This is my biggest problem with the design in terms of balance and aesthetics. Uh, looking at your version, the front view is amazing and fixes that problem. Talk to us through uh, why you chose to make these changes and give the JJ Prize a nice facelift. I have been asking for this since 2009, since I first saw this thing. Um, so did you watch my videos? And if so, thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have watched a few of them. I didn't watch those. I uh, didn't get to those. But um, when I saw the the the, the uh, JJ Enterprise, um, like I said, I, it was a fine ship. But I just 
the engines, the placements of the engines, the size of the engines, three things, placement, size, and shape bothered me. I just wanted to get my hand in there, snap it off, and put something back on there, you know? And, and, and Ryan Church is a, is a fine designer. I, that was, I'm sure that was a design by committee result. So what I did was I, I basically, when I saw that, I was like, God, they're, they're, they're really close together. When I started on the film, on Beyond, I um, had a model of the Enterprise that our model makers had made. And I looked straight down at it. And, you know, it, it had a weird kind of uh, shape to it. It was almost like a, um, a person who needed to go to the bathroom and had their knees together. And, and it, it just looked weird. So I wanted to, it did, just didn't have the power um, visually and the balance. So it was, wasn't very hard guys. I mean, it was just pull, pull it, pull Common them sense. Apart, pull them apart, pull them back and raise them up because when you're looking from the front, you want to see them, you know, yeah. they were remarkably close to the rim of the saucer. Mm -hmm. And if you have one of those windows looking right back out of it, you, you open that the view, the, the, the window there and you're like, hello, I'm blind. Bright blue light. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you have half the crew walking around with sticks because they've been looking through the window at the missiles, blinded. So I had to make those smaller, move them back and move them up. And it wasn't, it's amazing how a small uh, movement can really change the, the, the visual feel of a, of, a, of, a, of a ship. And I've been saying that since day one. Samuel will vouch for that. <laughs> and we did our mission briefing on your, on your concept sketches. That front view, we both were like, yes, straight away. Just, just yes, yeah. perfect. Just amazing. Cool. Um, so something that links directly to the 1960s Constitution class is the side grilling on the inner parts of the nacelles. So what were you thinking when you redesigned those little details uh, compared to the Ryan Church version? It was just a nice little detail. You know, we have a thing called, um, another thing in design called, um, actually a lot of this stuff is stuff I've invented in terms of my terms for when I teach my class. Um, it, we, we call it a visual tension, visual release. When you have visual tension is where all the detail is. Visual release is where there's no detail. And when you're a designer, you have to have visual tension, visual release. It balances the design out. If you have only visual tension, it means it's covered in detail and it's heavy. If you have only visual release, there's no detail and it's boring. So as a designer, especially in fantasy, you have to have a balance between those things. So my cluster of visual tension or cluster of detail was at the front of the, of the engineering section on the top and on the bottom in the center of the saucer and on the front leading edge of the nacelles. And everything else is pretty clean if you notice on, on the design there. So little details like that were just something that looked, it looks right. And all in all, the nacelles are sleek, sleeker and simpler and don't have that huge bulk at the front. They don't look like hair dryers anymore. Uh, it's far more balanced, which in itself feels more advanced. So why did you go in this particular clean and more balanced direction? I mean, obviously it makes more sense. We've got that as opposed to, you know, this is much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, and talk to me a little bit about the, also the placement of the nacelle. Uh, the, the strut right at the very front of the nacelle. I really mm. like what, mm. what what made you decide to do that? Working in the profile, it's the relationship of form, starting with the neck and the pylons relating to each other. The Also, the shape, um, the basic shape of the engineering section and the basic shape of yeah. the engines are the same. It's mm. basically taking the engineering section and elongating and thinning it out, but it still has a scallop on the bottom as does the engines, they have somewhat of a scallop. So you've got that same kind of relationship there. It was just the angles that I was working with. And, and it, looked, um, it looks fast standing still. <laughs> well, that, yeah. that's the thing. And you know, um, the, the, the thing about um, the JJ Enterprises is, is, for example, the neck leaned forward and, yeah. the, um, and then we did this modification where we, uh, in, in beyond where we kept the neck and we, we pushed the pylons backward and people love that. You know, where, where do you go next from that? You know, am I am I therefore in my in my evolutionary enterprise supposed to push my neck even further and push my pylons even more in reverse? Um, it gets odd and, and weird. I wanted to make an opposing statement, which was having. And this goes to your mm -hmm. question about the um, leading edge of the of the uh, nacelles. 
if you look at the leading edge of the neck in the profile drawing, it goes right down to the rim of the um, engineering section. Conversely, reversing that, the leading, uh, leading edge of the pylon goes up into the leading edge of the, um, mm. of mm. the, the cells. So I wanted to keep that line. And um, yeah, it was a difficult thing. It's like, well, this is really, some people are going to have to really eat this. And some people are going to really uh, accept it and with open arms, which, you know, I've mm. had. I do think though with this design, once we start the animations with the amazing model that Nick's done for us, I think people are going to like it even more. I think those lines will work so well in motion, seeing it fly and be elegant. I think it'll really work great in motion, which is something you don't often see. So these in-between steps, you know, it's a concept design, but let's see it as you would in a movie, and that does change it. Take a beautiful Ferrari or take a beautiful Lamborghini. I'm not comparing my design to those. I'm just saying because I'm a car designer, you take those, you take those cars and you look at them on full profile, <clears throat> they don't look that good, especially on the front. The overhangs look really long, and um, they look odd. So a prof getting, a prof getting the design perfect in profile is incredibly difficult. And so I'm choosing something that everyone, most people love is a Ferrari or Lamborghini, beautiful cars. They're very odd in profile. So um, you, 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 you've got to take that into consideration. And to your point, Samuel, when you see them moving, when you see it moving, the ship moving, you know, lenses can do all kinds of, of strange and beautiful things to a design, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you can play with this, the design relative to the lens that you use. A lens can can really enhance or destroy a design. So, that that that's something that will be really interesting to see it when it when it actually starts moving. Mm. Yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the final version when you see this episode and see it doing all these crazy stunts and yeah. yeah. Um, so now in regards to the final CG version that we see at the end of Star Trek Beyond, how much if any input do you have on this final final version? We know you made your model and then you sent it off and they made their own full movie version. Um, you know, you said the, the Franklin, the art department, changed the Bassard colour without even realising until you saw the movie. So do you have any great input on the final version uh, of, of, of that you saw? And do you have any thoughts about the, the final, final version? Well, the final version, you know, when you hand off your models and then you finish your job and you walk away and you're on another job, it's it's rare that they, they come to you and ask you for questions. And... Um, and, and certainly that, that it's rare for them to actually have you rework anything, unless there's a, a complete crisis. Um, you know, at that point, it's in the hands of their own modelers, and they're going to they're gonna do what they want to do. And the discussions continue with the director and the powers that be on colors of things. And um, with regards to the enterprise, um, um, the fact that, okay, the fact that they accepted s such a radical change was great. And... Um, the fact that that radical change stayed somewhat um, intact to the final product was great. But I knew that they were going to fiddle with some stuff. I knew that they were probably going to fiddle with the leading edge of the neck, which they did. Um, and certain other things, I'm sure there's some stuff been going on with the rear end of the, of the ship. Um, but for the most part, and, and I know that they messed around with the um, leading edge of the... Um, rim around in the cells. Uh, I think there's some detail there that they they messed around with, which all in all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the look of it. I, I think they did a really nice job. And like I said before, um, to reveal it like it did was, um, it was the best reveal I've seen other than the motion picture enterprise. It was fantastic. Yeah, I have to agree about that actually. Yeah, me too. Hmm. I mean, and, and, and to have the, you know, these are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise being voiced over, I mean, yes. How crazy, how fantastic was that, you know? What has the Trek community's reaction been to your concept renders after you released them? I know I personally, I was super excited to see them uh, as they cleared up yeah. a bunch of issues I had with the JJ Prize since first seeing it. But I know that Star Trek fans are very vocal and opinionated, like you said. And there is a lot of us. Some yeah. of them are loading their shotguns. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the reactions you've experienced and, you know, just how that... Uh, yeah. How, what you think? What do you think about those? It, it's been it's been mostly positive, um, but I think a lot of the, you know, a lot of the comments when the Franklin came out, the first image of the Franklin, the negative ones were because they didn't understand what it was, and then when they understood what it was, they accepted it. With the with the Enterprise, I don't think that they're they're seeing a lot of what they need to see and how they need to see it. You know, you got people that will speak both, out of both sides of their mouth. They'll say, 
I hate the the, the JJ Enterprise, and then they sh you show them mine, they hate mine, they like the JJ Enterprise, they change back. So for a concept designer, it's one thing showing your work to your parents, but then and making them happy. But try showing a village and making them ha all happy, or a town and making them all happy, or a city. Try, try showing the entire city of London your rendering and making them happy. What I'm doing is I'm showing, you know, the world my rendering and trying to make them happy. It's a huge population, not a world, but it's a lot of people that are into this stuff, and mm -hmm. you're going to have both sides, you know, vying in. And some, some of you, you trackies, I mean, you go at each other like it's unbelievable. It's, it's entertainment. Um, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it is what it is. I, I, I threw down what I did, and I'm very proud of it. And um, as you should and, be. And and anyone who, who doesn't like it, that's fine. But put up what you ha you guys have you you have and let's see what you have there should be a site of of ships from 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 fans you know that um yeah. that everyone can can vie in on you know let me channel my inner englishman for a second and say if they don't like it they can saw it off i don't know if that's right but it sounds right so they can close enough off. <laughs> and I think again with, with the Franklin will bring a whole lot of new people to really appreciate it with especially with your comments and, and see it really see it um, but last thing I want to ask is I believe the last question um, we know the ship still has a window on the bridge and you've told yeah. us that she's the same size as the previous Enterprise around 725 meters the original Constitution class from the 1960s was 289 meters making this Enterprise around 2.5 times larger the largest of the Canon Enterprises was the Enterprise E at 675 meters. This was designed and built over 100 years later in the continuity. What is your personal thought about the Enterprise being so much drastically larger? And could you not have shrunk down the Enterprise a little bit for this new version? I mean, average moviegoers wouldn't have noticed, but for us Trek fans who realize that the JJ-verse, the Kelvin timeline, is a bit upscaled, you know, everything's a bit bigger, it would have been nice to see. But what's your thoughts on how big it is, and could you have had the power to make it smaller, do you think? Um, well, let's start with uh, um, this is America, Samuel, and America, the word, subtlety, the word subtlety doesn't exist, and <laughs> you've got to go big the next time, you've got to go big, and, um, yeah, okay. and an Englishman to design the enterprise smaller, I'll just get a slap, so, um, you know, it's, you know, it's the same size as the JJ Enterprise, exactly the same length, I think it's 2,500 feet long, and, um, and so um, the size-wise was was that was all that was, dis was discussed. The same size as the JJ Enterprise. I, I was like, okay, fine. Whether it's smaller or bigger, it, it wasn't gonna. If it was gonna be small, it wouldn't have been that much smaller. And um, certainly, yeah. if it was bigger, I don't know if that it would be that much bigger. You know, um, I wouldn't have even suggested it be smaller. To tell you the truth, um, it would have been a room full of eyes staring at me with gritted teeth. Yeah. So, uh, and, and how do you feel about the upsize? I mean, like I said, two and a half times larger than the Enterprise from the 60s. And it's meant to be around the same period. I mean, how do you feel about just the, the pure scope of this version? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, again, it just goes to the entertainment of today. I mean, it's, mm. you can write anything and make it viable. You know, writers can make anything believable. Um, once they get the teeth into it, and at the end of the day, it's entertainment, and the, the bigger is better in, in in a lot of cases. Not that's not my motto. That's the entertainment world's motto. You know, it, it, whatever came before is going to be smaller than what you're doing now, and and so that that that's that's that whole thing. Um, and personally, I don't mind. I don't mind the size of it myself. Um, I think it's. And I, I actually don't, I don't mind the, I understand the view, the view window. And when you have those shots um, zooming into the window, you really, that's where you really, really get the scale of the ship. I mean, I really, when I was a kid, I couldn't get the scale of the ship. I didn't know how big it was, really. Maybe there's a few shots where there's a shuttlecraft, but um, I didn't really understand how big the ship was. And, um, and th that sim simple window, which so many people hate, including... Um, Mr. Foley here, um, I think, 
it's there for a cinematic reason and and um, also a scale reason. So it works for me. Speaking of scaling, that's why Gene wanted the bridge on the top of the ship. So that was yeah. a visual. We knew, we knew how big the inner space of the bridge was. Yeah. So that's why he put it on the top. So you could, you could relate to where the heroes were and how big the ship is in relation. So. Well, I talked to Samuel about this. You know, the dome on the top of the of the of the bridge used to be a window. And, and mm. I think the, in the um, in the first episode, the, very, the pilot's episode, yep. there's a shot where you go right in there into the cage, right? That mm-hmm. was the first episode. And... and um, they were going to bring that back in into darkness. Um, mm-hmm. There was a shot where they were going to tilt up, and the whole top was going to um, open up uh, like a prism, uh, not a prism, but um, anyway, it was going to open up. It was very complicated mechanics. It was beautiful, and um, it was it was next. They didn't end up doing it, but I, I've always loved that. And you know, if you don't have a view window, then you should have a dome, but something where you can mm-hmm. see occupants inside because like I said before the actors are the most important thing in any mm-hmm. movie if you don't relate to the actors if you don't feel for them you're not gonna not not gonna care I don't care how great the effects are so mm. um, it w- it's always nice for me at least to see them inside from from the outside mm-hmm. you, you're in you're in your home there you know mm-hmm. yeah. cool. okay guys well I think we can call that an episode thanks to Sean for joining us today thank you thanks for, thanks for having me it's been awesome talking to you and hearing all your great insights into this new piece of Trek lore. Definitely looking forward to more episodes with you in the future. Anyway, thanks guys for you to tuning in again this week. So please do us a favor by clicking that like button and do yourselves a favor by subscribing to the channel that brings you weekly Star Trek goodness. You know, here at Trek Yards. Subscribe. Do it. Yes, we love seeing you all each and every week as we keep the Trek fires burning, as it were, supplying you with all the great news and content. If you want to become a member of our team, so to speak, and help us out on a monthly basis, mm-hmm. please head on over to our Patreon page and donate whatever you can afford, or even visit our Trek Yards website at trekyards.com and click the donate button to show your support for the show. Anything you can donate or contribute will be greatly appreciated. So until you decide to watch again, I'm Commander Cousins. I'm Sean Hoggins. And I'm Captain Foley, signing off. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.